We are at the Capitol with Representative John Inns, and Representative Inns, you're putting up quite a battle for adult stem cell research. Help us out and give us some clarification what the differences might be between the stem cell research that we hear about. Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, adult stem cell research basically is using uh, adult stem cells from your own body or for somebody else's body. Uh, does not destroy any embryos, has nothing to do with any embryos. Uh, what it has to do with is stem cells that are in your own body that are um, taken from your skin, hair follicles, um, bone marrow, blood, nasal passages. They're finding them all over the place and they can do just as much with those as they can embry embryonic stem cells. Um, in fact, they're doing way more and we don't even need embryonic stem cells at this point. And now, as we've talked before, it's kind of enlightening to me that when I hear stem cell research, it, it gives me a bad taste uh -huh. out, of my, uh, out of my own ignorance. But when you mention embryonic uh -huh. stem cell research, that's truly the one that we've heard of, uh, over, uh, or we have heard a lot about over the last few years. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, the big media is really pushing embryonic stem cells. Uh, obviously now the president has come through and said that uh, federal funds can flow to embryonic stem cell research, which I think is kind of a travesty because what that's going to do is going to, again, reshift the focus more to embryonic stem cells and not to adult stem cell research. And the problem with that is adult stem cell research has yielded already over 70 cures and treatments for various diseases. Um, embryonic has yet to do anything. And the big thing is, is trying to overcome hurdles with embryonic. You have cell rejection if it's implanted in, into you from a donor, from a donor embryo implanted into somebody else, you get host rejection just like you would with a heart transplant or a lung transplant, which then they have to, with medication, try to shut down your own immune system to uh, keep your body from rejecting it. You don't have that with adult stem cells. The next problem you have with embryonic stem cells is that they tend to uh, cause tumors. They cannot control the growth rate of the embryos or the embryonic stem cells. Uh, what we've got is these things are producing tumors in a lot of lab animals. Adult stem cells don't do that. So why such the push towards embryonic? and less attention giving to what has been showing to be more successful in the adult stem cell research? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I've asked myself that many times. Um, one thing you need, to, you need to keep in mind as well is in embryonic stem cell research, billions of dollars have already flowed into that from private sources, from state sources, not near as much has flowed into adult stem cell research. And again, the contrast is obvious. There is ethical, con ethical concerns with embryonic stem cell research. And the ethical concern is destruction of an embryo. And nobody can deny that. There is no ethical concerns with adult stem cells, none whatsoever. And they're working out much better. Why is the media pushing this? personal opinion is is because I think it gives justification for abortion. Which of course is one of the hottest topics across the country every election cycle and every year. Yes, exactly right. And, and I think that the big media kind of leans that way. Now as far as from a researcher standpoint, um, you have researchers that are just sitting there going, well, they're always curious. And I understand that. I, like I said, I've, I've got science degrees. and you're always curious about some, what something can do. And so the more they can get out there, the more they can uh, lobby the media, so to speak, mm -hmm. the more funding, more attention they're going to draw, and the more funding that they're going to be able to get into for their little pet projects. So the legislation in which Representative John Enns is proposing is not associated at all with embryos, which is associated to abortion. It is truly 
taking stem cells from adults, from things like hair follicles, things just benign parts of adults in which we graciously give, um, to try to find answers for the problems that that adult is having. Is that fair enough? Oh, yes. It, very, very fair to say. Okay. Um, Dr. Ian Wellmont, mm -hmm. uh, many of you may not know or recognize that name, but when I say what he did, you'll recognize him. And what he did was he created Dolly the Sheep in England. And, okay. and how did he do that? He did that through embryonic stem cells. Uh, nuclear transfer is what, what they called it, and which is destruction of an embryo, okay? What, what he did there is something he felt he needed to do to get Dolly the Sheep. Just last year, he said there is no need for embryonic stem cell research any longer because we now have the technology to get stem cells from an adult back them up, and we can do the same thing we're, we've been doing with embryonic. He says, we don't need them any longer. Wow. So those of you who have concerns about embryonic stem cell research, um, or even about the issue of abortion, the way in which that we impact our local, uh, our local environment is by letting our voices be heard. We need to contact our representatives up here at the state capitol and help Representative John Enns push through the legislation, which, John, I would like, if you don't mind, for you to explain what exactly are you calling for with your bill? My bill, uh, HJR 1035, which is a House Joint Resolution, it's uh, something that will cause a constitutional amendment to come up to the, uh, for a vote of the people. It's, it's trying to get 10 percent of the tobacco settlement's um, earned interest. It, just the interest, it's not on the principle of the tobacco settlement. And last year, it earned uh, 15 million, 15.5 million uh, in interest. So I'm asking for 10 percent of that, which would give 1.5 million uh, dedicated to adult stem cell research in Oklahoma. Now, only companies that that are willing to do adult stem cell research only are uh, would be able to get that money. Okay. And now I'd like a few examples as to what kind of um, diseases are we talking about that this type of research could help? Yes, there's many diseases. Um, cardiovascular problems, um, lung problems, uh, lung cancer, um, uh, emphysema, all smoking-related diseases, uh, pancreatic ca cancer, uh, colitis, problems with the colon. Uh, you also have spinal cord injuries. You have diabetes, Parkinson's, the list goes on and on. Wow, and with a list such as that, John, would it be fair to say that an amount of $1.5 million is really just a start, but it's a way in which we can begin to move in the right direction? Exactly. Uh, Governor Henry said in his State of, State of the State address this year that he would like to see Oklahoma become a research center. This will help us move in that direction, and in a very important direction, because it's a step that that as far as right now, I don't know of anybody else that's taken a step like this in adult stem cell research. If we can be a leader in this area and put our money in the smart area, I think it'll bring in other funding, uh, private funding, and it'll just balloon from there. We'll bring in, be bringing in companies, researchers, and we're going to become nationally known, if not world, world known. In the state of Oklahoma, and it's really regardless of what uh, side you stand on the abortion issue, this is about helping be people become well. Exactly. And Oklahoma trying to become a research center for the world, this is a great opportunity for a groundswell of people like you and me to contact the state legislators and let them know, hey, let's push forth this uh, bill that sounds really great. Fair to say? Oh, yeah, very much, very much. And, and I'm happy to say that uh, today it passed through the House floor 99 to nothing. So it was very encouraging to me. It's going to head over to the Senate now, and uh, hopefully we can get it done there. Representative John Enns, thank you for all your research, and thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much.